I'm Katie Ayers with the Medicine Hat SPCA for Critter Care. This time we're focusing on the care of puppies. We have our Medicine Hat SPCA puppies here today, Mel and Norman, and they're going to be showing us all about how to take care of puppies. We'll be right back after this. So every once in a while we do have a litter of puppies available for adoption at the SPCA and we have a lot of interest in adopting puppies. So we want to help you determine if a puppy is right for you or an adult dog. The thing with puppies that you need to be aware of is of course it's quite a big commitment. So with puppies you would need to be more available to be home or able to come home during your lunch hour break to, to uh, let them outside to go to the washroom. And you need to be able to commit to regular obedience training and socialization with a puppy. And with any dog for that matter. Um, a lot of people will prefer to adopt a puppy because perhaps they have um, young children or they have a family member that, um, like another dog or a cat that they want the puppy to grow up with and be used to the animal from puppyhood so they might not have as many issues with cats perhaps if they come into the home as a puppy than an adult that has some pre-existing um, behaviors might have. So that can be one reason why people would choose to adopt a puppy but you, you want to make sure that you're ready for that commitment and also the size that they could get to be. So our puppies are usually some type of mix. They are often a shepherd mix of some kind and we don't for sure know how big they will get. Sometimes we don't know who the parents are and we certainly don't know their breeds. So they could get to be 60, 70 pounds easily. They could be smaller, they could be bigger. So you need to be prepared for any size of a dog as well. So for the Medicine Hat SPCA, our adoption process involves filling out an adoption questionnaire and we'll ask questions like, do you have a six foot fence? Do you have um, experience training puppies? Have you had a puppy before? And we'll have a conversation with you to see if you are, are ready for the commitment of a puppy or if perhaps an adult dog might be a better fit for you. If you're especially looking for a particular type of energy, we don't always know what our puppies will grow up to be like, so we don't know what their energy level will be like. However, the adult dogs, we already have a good sense of what their energy will be their personalities are more developed, so we can uh, have a better assessment of what they're like as a dog, as an adult. So that's one reason why some people do prefer to adopt adults, is that you kind of know what you're getting a little bit more. With puppies, a lot of it does have to do with how you train them, though. So you can train them, and you can bring them to obedience training, you can train them to be a therapy dog, you can do all sorts of different things from puppyhood where you focus a lot on training them to be the type of dog that you want them to be, but you have to be willing to make that commitment because it is a big commitment for sure. So for puppies, you do need to feed them puppy food until they're usually six to 12 months old. Puppy food has a higher calorie intake and a different nutritional content. That's really important for the development of a puppy. Once they are somewhere between usually six and, six and 12 months, your vet might recommend that they switch over to adult food and that will help to maintain their weight and provide different nutrients as they are growing up, different things that they need for their energy, for their joints and their bones, for their teeth, all of that. This is Mel and he's going to help us demonstrate nail care. So we noticed today that Mel's nails were getting pretty dagger-like. So there's several different types of nail cutters that you can get. These are personally my favorite. There's other ones that kind of um, slice up. I feel like I have more control with this type, so that's my preference. Luckily, his nails are clear as well. So you're just looking for the quick, so it's the pink part. And I usually err on the side of caution, so I'll start clipping off a little bit first, and then I'll go a little bit more if it's doing okay. So there you go, we just clipped off one of his little nails and he's tolerating this pretty well. Sometimes you need two people to help with nail care, someone to hold the puppy, someone to cut the nails. Sometimes that is safer. And um, the other thing that might happen sometimes is that you might nick the quick. So there might be a little bit of blood that comes out. Sometimes they'll let you know, they will do a little, a little yipe 
And that's why I always start off with cutting off just a little bit at a time so that I can make sure I'm not super close to the quick. And regular nail care, you know, if you're walking the, the dog, once you get to the point of, of walking them outside and they are on concrete, then often their nails will file down themselves. But these guys right now are, are, are too young for regular walks outside, so they're still quite little puppies. And um, they don't have their full set of vaccines, so we don't want them walking outdoors where all the other puppies might be. And we'll talk about why that is later. So that's just an example of nail care. You can also bend the paw back. Some dogs prefer that. And black nails, black nails are super fun to trim. <laughs> it's tough with black nails because you can't see the quick, so you don't know exactly where you're cutting. So again, start off with just a little bit. If you look underneath, especially as they get older, with this guy being so young, it's a, it's a little trickier to tell. But if you look underneath, you can see where the quick starts. So it, there's a bit of a groove in the nail. So that will help you identify where to cut. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. Sometimes it's good to have a little chew toy or something for them here. And a bit of distraction. And then the dew claws, which are these little nails on the side here. Those are the trickiest ones to get with puppies. It's just reaching that little area. And this, you know, puppies, a lot of times they will jump up on you. That's definitely a behavior that we will talk about a bit more in the training segment. But it's important to discourage jumping up at an early age. Otherwise, as this puppy turns into a 50 or 60 pound dog potentially, then they would still be jumping up and people don't like that so much. So right now we always, want to trim the nails of the puppies here because we have a lot of people that come in to visit them and this just prevents you know scratching on the arms and it's important also for them to get used to having their paws touched and having their nails trimmed at a young age so it's not such a scary thing to them as they grow up they're used to it already so we're going to talk a little bit about brushing puppies don't tend to shed very much at this age However, it is important to help them get used to the brush. So we suggest starting as young as eight weeks for sure, even younger sometimes. There's a ton of different types of brushes out there. This is one of the wire ones. You can get little combs. It depends on their fur, if they're likely to have an undercoat as they get older. So I would just brush them about, you know, at this age, maybe once a week to help them get familiar with the brush and be comfortable with it and not be too nervous. So this is puppy's first bath. He got a little messy today. So I usually fill the tub up. In this case, we're using a really deep sink. Um, a few inches. You don't want it too much because you don't want it to be up to their neck or anything. You don't want it too scary. And then I use something to scoop the water. It doesn't really matter what. And I give them a couple minutes to kind of get used to it. And you want to try and use warm water. Nothing too hot, nothing too cold. And this is why I have gloves on because sometimes they'll, they'll um, jump at your arms a little bit because they want to get out. So you're just gentle and always really, really gentle, of course, around the face. If they want to stand up, that's not a big deal either. Sometimes they will feel safer standing. And I just get them wet first. I don't like to put them under the tap. That's a really scary noise for a pup. So this is how I usually do their first bath. And they're not quite used to being bathed yet. So I'm gonna pop him back down in here. Just grab some shampoo. This is just any type of standard kind of puppy shampoo. And this again, this is just my process, and I rub it between my hands, and then I rub it on the pup from there. So I don't usually pour it right on the pup. You give him a good scrub. And this is just his first bath, so we don't need to be too, you know, aggressive or anything with the scrubbing. We're just trying to help him get used to being in a tub. Get some suds going. You can notice I'm avoiding the face for the most part. I'm doing a little bit up the neck and a 
a little bit on the forehead. I just don't want to be pouring water or getting shampoo in his eyes. He's doing really well. Give him a good scrub. Some shampoos, depending on what you're using, they'll suggest you leave it on for a couple minutes. It's a conditioning shampoo, but this one is just a standard one. I'm just wetting it a little bit to get it a little more sudsy. There you go, puppers. How you doing? Seems okay, interested in the water. Sure, you can stand up again if you want. Let's have you stand here though. This is towels over there, we don't want that to get wet. I'm gonna rinse him off. If you happen to have a shower attachment, that is awesome. So when he starts to panic, I usually just pause. Just give him a second. He's like, now I wanna get out because now I'm a little cold. I'm going to put him in the second sink where it has a towel there. They always want to shake after, so I usually just quickly put the big towel on top and then we'll get them all warm again. You can use a blow dryer on a low setting so that it's again not too scary. If you put it on the high setting that we use on our hair, then it'll be a bit too scary for most of them. They don't like that noise, but if you use the low setting, they can get used to it. And you can warm them up with that. And then we just do some puppy cuddles. And make them all warm. There's nobody. <laughs> Poor little guy. First bath. <laughs> oh, a little cold. A little cold, I know. Welcome back. We're here at the Cypress View Veterinary Clinic with Dr. Andrea Storch and with Scout. So today we're going to be talking to Dr. Storch about puppy care and pu specifically puppy medical care. So Dr. Storch, can you tell us a little bit about when someone should first bring their puppy into a vet? Absolutely. So it's important when a uh, owner has a new pet to bring their pet in here and especially to the clinic to meet their veterinarian and to get a you know a feel of the clinic and see if this is the right place for them so we call that a puppy meet and greet mm -hmm. and so that's the first time not everyone wants to do that so the next step is for their vaccines so sometimes puppies are vaccinated prior to going to their new home so it might be a few weeks before you meet us at the clinic here but uh, usually at their next vaccine series is a good time as well. Mm -hmm. and, some, and some puppies or some animals in general can be a bit fearful about going to the vet as they age. So it sounds like that would be a really good opportunity to help them get used to going to a vet in kind of a non-threatening mm -hmm. way. And they're not going in, say, for the first time when they need a surgery or something that's a little bit more extensive like that. Absolutely. We always strongly encourage our new pet owners, especially of puppies, to bring them in for just interaction with our front staff. Sometimes if uh, they can and they're, they're willing, they can come and meet the, the technicians and the vets in the back and then they can get a feel of the clinic. And we always encourage people that if they do have a fearful puppy, or some, or a pet that is, uh, you know, not too certain about the place that they're in, to just bring them in regardless. It doesn't matter. Just come in and weigh them, get them used to the scale. Yeah. yeah. That sounds good. That makes sense. So talk to us a little bit about vaccines. We all know that vaccinations are important. If you, say, get a puppy at kind of a standard age of maybe somewhere around eight weeks, when should they come in for a vaccination and what kind of vaccines would you recommend typically? Yeah, absolutely. So vaccination is a really important part for your, your puppy's health and well-being. Uh, one of the reasons we don't have a lot of those diseases today, and we do still have some, but we have um, low prevalence of them, so a low amount of them mm -hmm. is because we do vaccinate for them and so for their first few vaccines we do it here at the clinic and it could be different than other clinics but we do it at 8 12 and 16 weeks okay. sometimes puppies are vaccinated as early as six weeks old mm -hmm. and that's okay we'll work around that schedule but the key part of information for people to know is it's important to vaccinate them at that 16 weeks mm -hmm. of age okay 
because they actually lose their mom's antibodies that are protecting right. them. And that's why we do it in four week intervals. And so that's why we strongly encourage for them to come in every four weeks for their vaccines. So for the first series, they have their, what we call their distemper, parvo, parinfluenza, and adenovirus. Very fancy virus terms, but <laughs> really we've heard of parvo, right? We've heard of distemper. Um, so those are the big ones that we vaccinate for. And those ones are given at that eight, 12, and 16 weeks. We don't give rabies until they're 16 weeks old just to allow them to be old enough to tolerate the vaccine. Right. Then they need a booster at one year of age. Okay. And then at that point we can dictate whether or not we're gonna change the vaccines or add in a vaccine. Okay. A third vaccine that we do talk about is the kennel cough vaccine. So right? Bordetella. Bordetella. It's a bacterium and it's kind of like the, I always tell people it's like the flu vaccine right. in that, you know, it's got different strains per se, but yeah. it's this bacterium is always present in upper respiratory cough syndrome. Right. And so um, we call it kennel cough, but you can get it from groomers, you can get it from parks, you can mm -hmm. get it everywhere. Yep. And so what it does is it's not going to stop the pet from getting kennel cough, but it's going to reduce how hard it hits them if they do get it. So it won't turn into maybe pneumonia or something like that, exactly. hopefully. Exactly. And it yeah. can still, even with the vaccine, but it's it's protective, right? Oops. Yeah. It's better than not having it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Similar to the flu vaccine, like you said. Yeah. Something else that we know, especially working at the shelter with... Um, Sometimes we have a lot of dogs that will come in, whether they're pregnant or they already have their puppies from more rural areas, is deworming. Absolutely. Can you talk to us about why you need to deworm your puppies? For sure. Very fearful when we see worms. <laughs> <laughs> they're not the, the neatest things to see and they're kind of gross, they are. right? And mm -hmm. then we see that sometimes in, in their poo and sometimes in their vomit. Yep. And so it's really important to deworm them. So, um, Puppies get their worms from their mom and it crosses through their placenta right to baby. So regardless of where you get your dog, you're, they're going to have parasites. Some are going to have more of a parasite load like the moms yeah. that you were talking about. They've never been dewormed they've before never probably. never been dewormed, yeah. right? So they still, they can pass more worms on to their puppies. And so it's really important for them to get dewormed in a regular series as well mm -hmm. to ensure that we, we kill those adult worms regularly. And then after that, they should get regular deworming. Uh, some, it's currently recommended that dogs get dewormed once a month. Mm -hmm. We live down in Medicine Hat, so yeah. we're pretty lucky. We don't have a lot of worms so that we can change those protocols and you know, other factors can change it as well. So it's really important to talk with your veterinarian and be open with them and let them know about these potential risk factors that mm -hmm. might be in your home. And if you travel with your puppy as well, that could potentially Absolutely. open it up a little bit more too. Yeah, and they do need other full vaccines before they go down to the States. Of and of course, the States are gonna have different different bacterium and different uh, problems and we don't have so yeah. it's important to talk with us too when you're traveling yes and then the last thing I think we want to talk about is spaying and neutering your pets yeah. um, there's lots of different reasons why people might choose to spay and neuter and one of the ones that of course we talk about it at the SPCA is to try and reduce pet overpopulation we feel that you know we have uh, overall enough dogs and cats in our yeah. society that we try and spay and neuter them before they're adopted out. But there's lots of benefits for spaying and neutering. Can you tell us about some, maybe some of those benefits and also when you usually recommend it for Absolutely. a puppy? So these protocols for when to spay and neuter are constantly evolving when we get new information out about different different syndromes. So for female dogs, we do recommend that they tend to get spayed at that six months of age. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is it's usually before their first heat cycle. Um, and it does help us protect from mammary cancer. Mm -hmm. But don't worry if your dog does go through their first heat cycle, not, as all, not all is lost. Uh, we can still spay them after and they're still gonna be protected from mammary cancer. But other reasons to spay them even later on in life is to prevent from something called a pyometra. Mm -hmm. So it is where um, it's not a very pleasant condition. No, I've seen those a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it's uh, life threatening mm -hmm. and um, you know they're at a risk of getting it regardless throughout their life. Mm -hmm and also to prevent from um, having puppies. And so that's our current recommendation for females. Mm -hmm. And for males, there's um, 
you can protect from testicular cancer, right? Because right. you remove them. Of course. Um, but for larger breed dogs, we tend to recommend waiting as long as you can to a year or on. Mm -hmm. Some dogs are just very high, ambitious, rambunctious. So yeah. we, we, some owners can't wait yeah. until that year and that's fine as well. Because yeah. it does help to calm them down usually a little bit with that reduction in testosterone, yeah, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So we can't guarantee that your pet is going to be <laughs> calmer, but he's definitely not gonna try to find those females, yes, right? Yes, exactly. So it helps with that as well and reduces the testosterone. Right. So. Yeah, Perfect. and for smaller dogs, smaller males, six months of age is absolutely fine for them. Okay, and really you can get it done at just about any age. So if someone adopts an older pet, like Scout for example here was an SPCA puppy, so she got done when she was probably younger. But if she were to be adopted out at this age of eight months, they can get it done pretty much at any time by the sounds of it. But even if she was five or six years, it's still absolutely. something that you would, generally speaking, you would recommend to, to an owner. Absolutely, I would. And we do have a low-cost spay-neuter program at the SPCA as well that we are able to deliver in partnership with Cypress View. So our um, application forms are available at the shelter and people can come in and apply if they are on any type of financial assistance or just in a, a way where they're not able to currently afford to have their pet spayed or neutered. And of course, any puppies that are adopted from the SPCA will already come spayed and neutered as well. So thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for coming in today. <laughs>so now we are outside and we have two puppies with us and these little guys are eight weeks old and we're going to talk about one of the most essential training behaviors that you want to encourage in your puppy and that's potty training so these guys are just exploring they're just having a ball in the backyard right now and at this age you know they're pretty young but you have to start them young with potty training and potty training is all about positive association with going to the bathroom outside. So anytime they decide to pee or poop outside, you want to reward them and make a really big deal out of, it, out of it. So if they were to pee, I'd be like, oh yes, puppy, good job, what a good job, good puppy. And I would probably give them a cookie. See here, oh, there's a cookie. Good puppy, good pee pee, good puppy. And then we would go back inside at that point, once they've finished their business. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of reinforcing of the behaviors with puppies in order to get them to the point of being trained. If you have another dog in your home, that can sometimes help because they'll follow the adult dog outside and they will learn from them and the adult dog will show them how to potty outside and then you go back inside and you don't potty inside. If they do have an accident inside, it's not even a matter of if, it's when they do have an accident inside because they will at this age, then they recommend that you ignore it. You clean up after your puppy and you simply ignore the behavior. We no longer rub their noses in it or swat them on the bum or anything like that. They have shown that those types of training techniques really don't work with puppies. So the best thing is to keep putting them outside regularly, very, very regular potty breaks for puppies of this age. They can have longer breaks in between their potty breaks as they get older. And positive reinforcement, so being sure to reward them when they do go potty outside. And then not, not uh, making them think about pottying inside as such a bad thing. Like you don't want them to have a negative association with pottying in general. Most pups can be potty trained by the time they're about six months old in terms of not having any more accidents. Um, they can usually, at this age, they can hold it for maybe three hours. That's probably about your max. So if you are adopting a puppy, you would need to have someone home regularly to let them outside. And puppies, as a rule, almost always pee after they have playtime. So if they're napping, and they should go outside right after they nap, and then they might have a playtime, and then they should go outside after that, or even better, have playtime outside. So they pee quite regularly at this age and they can, their bladders are getting stronger and stronger and they'll be able to hold it longer and longer as they get older. So usually by the time they're six months, they can be fully house trained. So we are inside of a house and we are gonna be talking about crate training our puppies. 
and we have about eight week old puppies here right now. Crate training is so important to helping them feel like they have a comfortable space in the home, a place that is just theirs that they can go to, and it also helps so much with potty training. And for a puppy this size, so this pup's probably around 10 pounds or so, but only eight weeks, this is about a perfect size crate for that. Any pet store that you go to, they can help you size your crate for your puppy as well. But ideally, you want there to be enough space in there for them to stand up to, and f be able to turn around. With puppies, it's really important that you don't have too much space because if you have a really big crate for a puppy this size, they will use one side to pee and poop. So for, for crate training, often at this age, you're using it maybe when you're gone for a few hours or at night. This is a good size for that. What I usually start with is having the crate in the space in general so they can get used to the sight and smell of it and they will often go in and even explore on their own. If they aren't really seeming to be too curious about exploring, you can take some treats and you can throw them inside the crate and sometimes, sometimes when they'll cooperate, they'll go inside and get their cookies. You can feed them their dinner in there that will help them get used to the crate. You can give them a special bone or treat inside, especially some puppies will, will be less likely to enjoy the crate than others. And it's just wanting to create, again, a positive association with the crate. So you want them to be comfortable in there. You don't want them to be screaming and screaming. So if they are, then you need to take things back a step and help them just get more used with the, to the presence of the crate and maybe do things like feed them their dinner in there or let them chew on a nice toy. So this puppy you can see is kind of settling down and having a nap, so that's perfect. And this is a really good size. As she gets older though, because she'll probably be a 50 to 60 pound dog when she's full grown, you will need to upgrade and, and uh, switch out your crate for a bigger one, probably two, maybe three times even as they get older. There are some crates that you can buy that have dividers so that when they're younger you can only let them have access to a part of it and then as they're older they can have access to, to more of the crate. But this way, because they're in such a, a small space realistically, but still big enough for them, it's not too big that they will likely potty in there. So you shouldn't have an issue with them peeing in there unless you're leaving them in there for too long. So a puppy of this age, you can probably leave them in here for, really depends on the puppy, anywhere from two to probably three hours before they would need another potty break. And again, as they get older, then they can hold it for longer. And this is one of the best um, potty training techniques as well as just, again, letting them have a space that is just theirs so that if they need a break, if they need a nap, they need to get away from other dogs or, or kids maybe in the home, then they can kind of escape to their crate. So we really recommend doing crate training with your puppy. Thank you very much for joining us for Critter Care and learning all about puppies.